Good morning! In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert any pre-made hair card hair system into a strand-based groom system so you could use it in Unreal Engine or Blender or any other software when you want that extra higher fidelity. So let's jump right into it! So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use this pre-made hairstyle in CC4. The hair is made up of hair cards and we're going to transfer this into Blender where we're going to convert it into strands. As always when transferring characters between softwares, make sure to change the character pose to a T-pose. Then we're going to go over to File, Export FPX Cloud Character. I'm going to choose Unreal and then Mesh. These hidden faces use Subdivided Mesh. Bake Diffuse Maps, uncheck Epic Skeleton and Foot IK. Use T-Pose as Bind Pose, Embed Motion and use T-Pose. My regular export settings for exporting a character to Unreal Engine. Let's give it a name and then wait. Alright, the export is complete. Let's drag and drop the FPX into the Blender viewport. And hit OK. Let's wait for the model to load. And here you can now see our hair made up of hair cards. Just ignore the weird shading going on at the moment. This mesh has two materials, one is for the scalp and one is for the hair cards. So let's go, let's go into edit mode, deselect everything and select only the hair. Then we're going to separate this mesh from the other one. We're going to unparent this using Alt P and then clear and keep transform. Let's move this out of the main hierarchy for now. And here we have only the hair cards making up this hair style. So there are several ways to achieve this next step, but the main idea is to have only the outer edges of the hair cards uh, still remaining. So I'm going to show you two ways of achieving this. So let's start with my favorite one, which is to delete the horizontal lines in the hair cards. So let's make sure that UV sync selection is enabled. Select the edge select mode. Let's start selecting all the horizontal lines going through the hair cards. Be careful not to select the vertical lines. And let's go into the viewport, hit X and delete the edges. This will keep the vertical lines, but remove the horizontal lines. So let me just go through all of them here and delete all horizontal lines like so. There we go. Hit X, delete edges. So you probably get the main idea. Now we have like the skeleton left of this hairstyle. So we can build upon this uh, using it as a template. The other quicker way of doing it is just to group all of the UV islands on top of each other. You need to disable the UV sync for this. Select all of the islands, gridify, and then have them aligned to the right edge. Now you can select all of the vertices to the left of this uh, vertical line and delete all vertices except this main vertical line. This will also give you the main shape, although not quite as detailed as the first method I showed you. Cool, so now we have the hairstyle and the edges that makes up the hairstyle. Let's apply the scale and all the transforms. Now a strand system uses curves, so we'll need to convert this mesh into a curve object. And from here we can use Blender's Groom modifiers. So let's add a modifier, go down to hair and then generate duplicate hair curves. Let's lower the radius to something very small, something like 0.05. This will make the hair a bit denser. 
going to perhaps increase the distance just a bit. And then we can also use the tip roundness to get a more organic distribution, the hair strands. Just play around with the values here. Cool. Uh, let's try 15. That's perhaps a bit too much. It's better to start out small so you can more easily modify the hairstyle if you want and then add more hair strands in between later. I'm going to go through and add some modifiers here. So I'll start with a hair curves noise to introduce some organic noise into this hairstyle. And then I'm going to use a frizz hairstyle, a frizz hair curves. Then I'm also going to add a smooth out hair curves which will give each strand just a bit more variety. Finally, I'm going to add a duplicate hair curves once more. And by doing it in layers, you retain more of the original hairstyle, uh, as opposed to if you only did duplicate hair curves in the beginning. Make sure to very often look at the before and after, so the hairstyle doesn't change the shape from the original design. Some change is inevitable, but uh, yeah, make sure to try to keep the original shape as much as you can during this process. Finally, I'm also going to add a utility redistribute uh, curve points to realign the curve points uh, evenly throughout the curve. Cool. Here we have our finished hair groom. So the next step is to apply these modifiers to the hair curves. And if we do a control A on this one, or apply the modifiers over here, you can see that it wants to convert it to a mesh first. So let's do just that and convert the entire object to a mesh object. And first I'm going to save because this might crash Blender. So let's convert it into a mesh. And when we convert it, you can see up here that the mesh is now 3.8 million edges, which as you probably can guess is way too high. So we'll need to optimize the hair curves before converting them into a mesh again. So I'm going to undo this with Ctrl Z. Let's go over to the curve properties and under geometry, I'm going to change the resolution from four to one under the render U, I'm going to change it to 1 and the preview uh, to 1 as well. Next, I'm going to jump into edit mode. I'm going to select curve, bezier type, nerves type, then handle type under control points to vector. Now let's try the same operation once again. Object convert into a mesh. You can now see the massive difference, as this now is only 320-ish uh, edges, which is a lot more manageable than 4 million. When the modifiers are applied, let's convert the object once again to a curves object, so we can export it. Great! Now we've applied our modifiers, and the mesh is once more a curve object. If you want to, you can do some adjustments to the hairstyle to make sure that strands don't go through the mesh, etc. When it's time to export, it's extremely important that you hide everything from the render and viewport view layers. Otherwise, it will export data that Unreal will interpret the wrong way and you can't use the hair groom in Unreal. So make sure that you only have your hairstyle object visible. Everything else must be hidden, 
let's apply the transform once again and then go over to file export alembic as unreal uses meters instead of centimeters we will use a scale of 100 here make sure that selection only and visible only is selected let's change the settings to render settings and then finally export before we jump into unreal i want to show you just a small uh, quick tip if you have more than half a million edges when trying to convert it between a mesh and curves we need to optimize it in some way and have blender not crash the easiest way i found to do this is by going into edit mode and then using x-ray mode selecting small chunks with ctrl l to select the entire linked edge we get a small chunk of it i'm going to do p and separate this selection now with this smaller selection it's more manageable to unsubdivide it and then let's repeat this process select a small chunk separate it and then unsubdivide it and when we've gone through all of our individual pieces here let's convert them into curve objects now finally we can select all of them and do a ctrl j to merge them into one object once again finally for the last step we're going to bring in our groom into unreal engine when you bring it in as an alembic so make sure that rotation is set to 90 and then scale minus one on the y axis this will bring it in the right way make sure that alembic hair groom importer plugin is enabled let's open up our hair groom and lower the hair width also let's jump over to the lod settings let's select auto and increase this to one in order to show all of the hair strands Let's play around with the settings here. Also, you're going to use stable rasterization. And then obviously you will need a hair shader material for the hair groom to look good. Uh, I won't cover the material in this video though. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see that video. But I'm going to leave it here. So you can see the final result of converting our hair card system into hair groom system using strands instead. This gets rid of that nasty moiré from dithering the opacity channel. Cool. So I hope you found this video informative as always. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.